There's um that um what is the construction there is written in French. Yep. Therefore, I uh, I need an interpreter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a fuse. It's a uh, circuit. It's a circuit uh, disruptor. Two hundred. Uh, it's a, it's a fuse, and it says actually the number of the fuse uh, holder. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it was, but it being written in French, I would And all of these are spare parts uh, from a... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, these are... These are brushes for the uh, electric motor. Okay. So we have spare parts and... Uh, bringing a ladder over here? No, I'm going to go through this way. Right. As soon as I can get this old man out of my way. Uh, there you go. So you're the man. <laughs> Doctor said, our curator himself said, are you going to be here Sunday? Because it would be yep. nice if you were here because the gentleman from France. It's about 20 miles from where you're sitting right now. The test facility is called, uh, let's see, Transportation Test Incorporated, TTI. But you can't get out there. This is a very closed facility. Airspace over it, you can't fly over it. It's restricted. Uh, they do testing for various nations out there. There was an engine out there for China. But anything that goes to TTI, it, it's closed. You can't go out at all. Mais disons que le centre d'essai, c'est c'est à une trentaine de kilomètres de la ville de Pueblo et euh, C'est en même temps une grosse industrie, ça fait marcher une partie de la ville. Et puis c'est un petit peu quelque chose de mystérieux pour le commun des mortels. C'est un peu la zone 51 du coin, surtout depuis le 11 septembre 2001. Il y a une sécurité, euh, puisque c'est parce qu'évidemment sensible. Euh, c'est là que sont testés tous les trains des états unis Et puis, euh, et puis il y a une sécurité aussi industrielle, puisque des pays, euh, même euh, la Chine, des pays asiatiques, euh, viennent tester des trains sur ce centre d'essai particulier, qui permet de les faire dérailler, de les faire exploser, de, de tout essayer. Et donc, euh, bah notamment les, les personnes euh, qui ont en charge aujourd'hui les, les prototypes des aérotrains de l'époque euh, avaient une vision vraiment, euh, comment dire, sécuritaire du site et, et n'ont jamais même essayé de s'en approcher puisque pour eux c'était impossible. J'y suis allé par hasard en touriste et, euh, et puis finalement aller jusqu'à l'entrée du site et, euh, et découvrir au regard de quelques petits coups d'œil euh, sur les côtés qu'il restait encore pas mal de traces des essais d'aérotrains de l'époque. Any new locomotive or train of any sort has to go to the test track. It has to be tested. And it takes them about two years to test. It's a big, big circle track out there. They also crash trains. They uh, roll them over. They've got a tunnel built for subways that they crash them in that. It's quite a setup out there. The basic idea was that a company would bring their vehicle to the Department of Transportation test facility and where all of the, the uh, instrumentation and all of the engineering for, the, for making the, the tests that were necessary to provide the information that the company wanted was made available at a central location. And it made it convenient then for the companies to bring their vehicles here, test the vehicles, collect the data that they wanted to take, in, and they, their management and their engineers working in conjunction with the Department of Transportation's uh, home engineers here, so to speak, would then make sure that, that the company got the kind of information that they needed. Mm -hmm. Reports, of course, were then written, and generally then, in, in most instances that I'm aware of, the company would take their vehicle and go home and take their data and everything with them and the Department of Transportation would move on to another project where the company would bring in a vehicle. And it's my understanding that that's the same process that was taken with the Roar vehicle and with the Grumman vehicle. Uh, they were brought by the companies and the expectation was that when the company finished they would take their vehicle and their data and mm -hmm. go home and do whatever they were going to do with it. They right. didn't take the vehicles. But in some cases, you're, in some cases, they didn't actually take us. the vehicle. Okay. So those and guys <coughs> tested the Roar during all that time. So <coughs> yeah, they were, yeah, 
there were different ones at different times. Uh, the Garrett, which you guys are also going to get, mm -hmm. uh, is back east now being uh, completely rebuilt. <laughs> and they decided not to move these vehicles back east. I can't remember which one came here first. Mm -hmm. I have the, uh, I, the, the one that I do not have the documentation on as to the date that it was actually transferred uh, in my files is uh, uh, the, the Roar vehicle, but I do have the dates and everything for the other two vehicles. The, the missions, the things that they were testing at, uh, uh, that the Federal, Federal Railroad Administration wanted to test, compared to the far-reaching outlook mm -hmm. that the uh, Department of Transportation had initially when they created this facility. Um, as an engineer, I thought that this was fantastic. For the first time, I thought we're we're making we're going to take all of the surplus engineers that we've had in NASA, bright people, forward-looking people, innovative people. We're going to take them, and we're going to America is finally going to start utilizing its talent. We're going to take those people, and we're going to now start focusing on the railroads in this country, the infrastructure mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. And so as an individual engineer, I, I thought, gee, finally, we're waking up. We're going we're gonna to do it right this time. And for a few years, <laughs> we did. I think they looked forward. They, the idea was, let's, let's really push the envelope. Let's see what we can do about uh, uh, developing vehicles and, and uh, improving the transportation system mm -hmm. in this country. And then, then the Fed, the FRA. Yeah. Yeah. The F. The now the FRA. They're, they're an important agency. They're an important group of people, but their mission is, is maintaining and and a more and a gradual improvement of what we've got. Is my perception my, that uh, the the types of things that they're doing out there are important and need to be done. But, but uh, I, I guess one could have. A, I have a feeling that we lost that drive to to really push that envelope and to move on into a, a new uh, envisionary area of uh, of rail related transportation. Not just hard rail. Yeah. Yeah. They decided at that time. To, to simply donate the machines, the carcasses, uh, to the city of Pueblo. Now the ones you guys built in France, hey, primo, they ran. Mm -hmm. They were great. They were efficient. This thing wasn't, and that's what killed it. I didn't know that was possible. I'd never seen the other ones until you showed them to us. I didn't know that they could run on jets or props or rockets or anything. Actually, to be frank with you, this aero train here was the only aero train I've ever had anything to do with. I never knew there was more in France until I talked to you. Now I know the story of it. I didn't realize, as a matter of fact, that you had that much uh, prototype on the ground operating, you know. I thought the machine had just come here to the Pueblo Test Center to be tested, and if it proved out, then you would go ahead and elaborate on it and put that kind of infrastructure in place, which you showed us on your video. And that, I think that is, a, that is a huge investment by you guys, and I think you had some pictures of how it's kind of deteriorated, and gee whiz, that's too bad, because there's no machine to drive on the doggone thing. And it probably costs more money to take it down than it's worth, so you just let it stand there. That's just terrible. Let it be known and shown, and possibly uh, your folks, your country might even, maybe some certain business people back there, see that as a mission for them to point out to the world a really neat thing that kind of got shoved under the rug or just kind of got the rug pulled out from under it and it did not go to fruition. It was a pretty decent outfit as we all know and I, I think so too and I've just found this out just recently that it was so cool and you guys had all this stuff in the sky back there and ran the doggone things on it and now it's just like boom. It's just that it, it didn't fit into somebody's agenda politically.